Hey pilots, Drain Man here, and today I have a very special video. Today we are going to learn how to set up Lewis scripts. I have a full playlist on the Tyrannus if you want to do all kinds of cool stuff, but maybe you want to get your Lewis scripts cracking, and this video is going to be for that. If you're rocking KISS, I've got a full video step-by-step -step on how to set up Lewis scripts with KISS. I'm going to go ahead and put that video down in the video description. And if you're rocking Betaflight, then you're going to want to watch this video. Alright Pod, so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up an OpenTX. Firmware that is on our Tyrannus has to be able to run Lewis scripts. And all that means is if you just bought your Tyrannus and it came out of the box and it's got old firmware on it, you're not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to roll through the entire process of putting new firmware on your Tyrannus. I have a video on that. I will put that down in the video description. I am going to show you a few things inside of OpenTX, the companion. Lua Scripts is about more than just being able to change your beta flight parameters. You want to also be able to control your VTX. For me, that's like, other than PID tuning, that's like the number one reason why I like my Lua Scripts. All right, pilots, let's go ahead and open up the OpenTX companion. All right, when we're talking about OpenTX and the firmware with our Tyrannus, I'm not going to show you how to flash it, but you do have to be running OpenTX 2.2 or greater. If you're running anything under 2.2 or less, you're going to want to update anyway, so go ahead and do that. The next thing we need to do is connect our radio to the PC. Hold your two trim centers to the center. Go ahead and flick your switch on. Once you see this screen, flip it upside down and you need a USB cord. It does have to be a type B, not a micro USB and go ahead and put that in there. All right, once you've connected your Tyrannus to OpenTX, you are on, you are live. Come in here and click on settings. Once you click settings, what you're looking for is you're looking for Lua. You have to have Lua checked in order for this to work. Also, guys, if you're running just quadcopters, you don't do any helicopters or anything like that, you can check no heli, and it'll save you one of the prompt screens. It's one less thing to have to deal with. All right, pilots, so I want to talk to you about Lua C. And the reason why is, is because if you just check Lua, you're probably going to run into the same situation that I ran into and a lot of other guys ran into, and that's where it tells you error there's not enough space, and that's a crappy problem to have because then you got to start over and you got to put Lewis C. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend it to you right off the rip. Go ahead and check Lewis C. That'll be this tab right here. Once you've checked Lewis C, you are going to write this firmware to your radio. I'm not going to do it because as you can see, I've already ran it. That is going to sum it up for what you need to do inside of OpenTX. So make sure you flash and you've checked those two boxes. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to head over to this URL. I'm going to put it down in the video description so you won't have a hard time finding it. This is a very updated version. Any videos you're going to find on Betaflight Lua scripts are not going to be this far ahead, and that's just because they're constantly updating stuff. So let's go ahead and download this zip file. All right, pilots, before we unzip these new Lewis scripts, I want to create a new folder because I don't want to confuse my old Lewis scripts with my new Lewis scripts. If you have this, then make sure you do that. If you don't, then don't worry about it. I still recommend having a folder for your Lewis scripts. So that way, if you get a new Tyrannus or you want to update it, or maybe you want to throw them on your buddy's Tyrannus for him because now you've watched Drain Man's video and you know how to do Lua scripts, you'll have them in a nice, neat, organized folder. So I'm going to make a folder called New Lua Scripts. And we'll make it one word. So now when I head over to the unzipper, I will click the file, extract, and I'll be able to head over to that folder called New Lua Scripts. Boom, and let's hit extract. All right, so there you go. Now we've got our new Lewis scripts right here in our folder ready to go. All right, pilots, so you've got your new Lewis scripts on your PC ready to go. You've unzipped them. You are ready to install them. 
What I need you to do now is you want to pull up your folder that has your Lewis scripts in it and you want to pull up your actual Tyrannus SD card contents. Inside of here, what you'll do is you'll come over to your FPV folder, you'll open up your new scripts, you're going to see your OBJ, go ahead and double click. Drag a window, just go ahead and grab like a box, go ahead and select all of them, and then just simply drag them over and drop them into your SD card. If you've done it correctly, it's going to work, and all of the files are going to go where they're supposed to go. If you have not done it correctly, it's just simply not going to work. I have my old Lewis scripts on here. Now that I've updated new Lewis scripts, I'm going to go ahead and replace these files because I have new upgraded files. And some of the files might have not changed and just need to be replaced. There's no need to have them twice. So I'm going to hit replace. Alright, so let's go ahead and demount our Tyrannus. Okay, pilot, so I've pulled up an image of a flight controller. That way I can show you how to wire it very quickly. There's not much to it, but you do have to do these two wires in order to be able to do it. If you have a crossfire, you do not have to worry about it because you'll be communicating through a UART. That means you've got a TX and an RX and it's already talking. You don't have to worry about it. But... In order to run smart audio, which is usually done through the OSD, but I like to use it on Lewis scripts. And now that you're setting up Lewis scripts, you're going to be able to run it through there too. For your TBS Unify, if I scroll over here to the right, you will see right here where it says TBS Unify Pro. Doesn't matter which one you have, there is going to be a white wire that says smart audio. That white wire, as you'll see this little pink line, it discontinues because it's in a different place. And right here, you're going to see the pink where it says TBS Unify Pro. And you'll see that they have it soldered up to TX3. If you've got a smart audio pad, as some of these flight controllers and PDBs do these days, you don't really have to worry about it because it'll be preset. But if it doesn't have it, then you need to wire it to an open UART. That means that TX3 is not being used for your FR Sky you are going to need to get your smart port wire, which you'll see right here in the green. It says smart port. If you want to run Lewis scripts, you have to do this part. So you will take your green wire, which on the RXSR, it's actually a yellow wire. I don't know why they did them backwards, but you've got to take that wire and you need to solder it to ATX as well. On some flight controllers, it will be labeled smart port. If you find it and it is, great, install it, love it, enjoy it. If it does not say smart port, solder it to an open UART. And then at that point, you'll have both soldered and ready to go. Alright, pilot, so you've got your radio ready and you've got your flight controller wired properly. Now it's time to jump into beta flight. You're going to need this cord right here and you're going to need your quad. I'm going to use this high-end racing build. If you want to see how it was built... I'll put a link in the video description on how this drone was built. Also, I showed you guys how to set it up. It's for the beginner, so if you already know how to use Betaflight, don't even worry about that one. All right, here we go. Let's plug in our USB. Once you're in Betaflight, we're going to take the few steps that you got to take to make sure that your Lewis scripts are going to work. If you're rocking Crossfire, some of this stuff won't apply to you. If you're rocking FR Sky, more might apply to you than if you were running Crossfire. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First thing we need to do is head over to the Ports tab. And in the Ports tab is where you will set up for your Smart Port and your TBS Smart Audio. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and show you mine. On mine, you can see that it's already set up. That first wire that we talked about, which is Smart Port. If you're rocking a Crossfire, you don't need to worry about this. But if you're rocking an FR Sky, you do need to worry about this. You need to have your Smart Port connected. If you don't, it's not going to work. Your smart port, depending on which UART you put it on, and looking at mine, you can tell that I've put it on UART 1, and that is why when you see UART 1 right here, you can see that my smart port is on it. And you're going to do that under your telemetry output. That is why you soldered it to a TX, because it is a transmit. The T is for transmit. Now, talking about the TBS Smart Audio or the TBS Unify, or if you're running a Tramp, you would go ahead and select here and put it on the Tramp Protocol. If you're running something different, please adjust accordingly. 
Mine's a Unify, and I put mine on UART2, TX2, so I went ahead and turned that peripheral on under UART2. After you've done that, click Save and Reboot. Okay, pilot, so go ahead and click on your Configuration tab. We're going to scroll down a little bit. I'm rocking Crossfire, so you'll see here I have Crossfire selected. If you're using FR Sky, be sure to put it on FR Sky. This is the tab right here, and it says telemetry. This is the only thing you need to be concerned with, and you've got to have it on. If your telemetry is not on, you are not going to be able to use your brand new Lua scripts. Oh yeah, that was the right switch. That didn't suck at all. Switch warning. All right, Pod, so one of the first things we want to do is we want to go into our menu. We want to page over... And we are looking for our telemetry page. We are working with telemetry. It is page 12 of 13 if you have an X9D. I want you to go down and you are going to go to discover new sensors. I want you to click that and look for new sensors just to update and get your quad talking to your radio through telemetry because inside of Betaflight, if you didn't have telemetry checked, this might be a new development between your quad and your radio. If you've already done that, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and head right over to page 13. After you've done that, then you need to assign your Lua script to a certain screen. And that screen is gonna be screen one, unless you've got other things going on, then you can put it on screen two. So what you need is you need display, page 13 of 13. So if you're here, menu, and then press it 13 times till you get to 13. All right, so now we're on 13. Right here, you're gonna see screen one is listed as none. Go down, press enter, and change this all the way to where it says script. Once it says script, let me get you in a little bit closer. Once it says script, press enter, and then scroll over to the three lines, press enter, and you're gonna have all your different options. You're probably only gonna have one option and that's gonna be beta flight. Me, I have KISS Smart Port for my FR Sky KISS builds. I have KISS CF, which is Crossfire for my Crossfire builds. I have Butterfly and I also have beta flight. I'm gonna press enter and that is going to get me my script is beta flight for screen one. If you've got some other things going on, it's up to you what screen you put them on. If you've got nothing else going on, just put it on one. Now that you've done that, you can press exit, 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 exit. And when you're right here, if you hold down the page key, it's going to bring you to your beta flight Lua scripts. And you should see this page. Whether you've done everything correctly or not, you need to see this page. Before you plug it in, before you do anything, you have to have this page. If you don't have this page, go back to the drawing board and rewatch the video. Now that you're here, we can go ahead and plug in our quadcopter and we should get telemetry. Telemetry recovered. And there you go. So now you can see right off the bat, I can change my PIDs. And it's important that you guys know it's a little bit different than the traditional type of Tyrannus stuff because OpenTX works in a special way. You know, we're all accustomed to holding enter to save and then long press and then select and then press enter. This is not like that. You actually hold down the menu key to save a page. And you can reboot the quad, which is actually a new feature that wasn't there before, so that's pretty cool. You can press reload, which is going to change all of the values that you just put on, and you can start over, kind of like a exit without saving. What you'll do is you'll press and hold menu, hit save page, and that'll save the page. Do not change more than one page at a time because it's not going to work for you. Now, to get over to the next page, you cannot press page. You have to press menu. And when you press menu, it's going to take you over to the next stuff. You're going to see here there is so much stuff you can do. Now we're in feed forward. Now we're inside of the rates. And it's not just our RC rate. We've got super rate, expo, throttle, TPA. We've got your brake. I mean, you've got everything. If I page again, I've got my anti-gravity and my VBAC compensation. I've got my low pass filters, gyro one. If I had a dual gyro, it'd be here. I've got my D-term. 
I mean, you've literally got everything. I'm running an 8K, 4K, 32Ks off. I'm running D-Shot 1200. This is phenomenal, guys. I don't see any reason in the world why everybody isn't running Lewis Scripps. All right, let's scroll through. What else do you get? Now, this here is because, now look, you can see, I can quickly change my power level because I'm joining a race and I need to be at 25 milliwatts. I can jump into pit mode if I'm going to set a few things up before I fly off and, you know, do whatever I got to do. You can select the frequency directly or you can adjust your band or channel. I believe that this feature all on its own makes Lewis Grips worth having. All right, pilots, that's going to sum it up for this video. I hope that this was extremely helpful. Helpful. I hope that everybody who is having trouble with their Lewis scripts now has it. Any pilots that didn't have it, I hope you're rocking it now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one.